Well, hello all. I'm um, just about ready to start. We're gonna do this session for about a half hour. Hopefully you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, so you see the where it says we will start shortly? At 2.15 p.m. Okay, great. All right, so <clears throat> let's talk about Tinkercad first. Um, this is a free site. I'm going to the dashboard now. And when you sign up, you can use your school account and sign in that way. And to create a new design, we just click on create design. And the first thing it does, you'll may notice it has like this weird name up here it automatically names all of your projects because it constantly saves your work. So I'm gonna change the name to sample lesson. So let's start with the tools down here. This first right here is the way of manipulating everything and turning it around. So we have this three dimensional space that we can move around the screen. And if you just want to jump to the, a front view or a right view or a bottom view or a left or a top, you can do that just by clicking those little arrows. But if you want more of a three-dimensional view, you just grab a corner and drag it around. The first button down here is the home button and that sets the screen to kind of its default position. So if you get lost, you can always reset it. Um, this button right here uh, fills the window view. So when we get to the zoom buttons, if I zoom out too much or zoom in too much, this kind of resets that view for you. This is my zoom, so I can zoom in. And I'm gonna hit my reset. And I can zoom out. This switches the perspective to no longer 3D. So for the most part, we want it to be 3D. So let's look across here at the top. This right here is a copy, so we can copy things. This right here is a paste. We can use the same copy and paste tools that we talked about in class. The CTRL key and the C button does a copy if you clicked on something. And a CTRL key and a V key does a paste. This is called duplicate and repeat. This is a little bit different. This allows us to make multiple copies of something. Um, we can do a delete to delete something. These two arrows are undo and redo. Across here, um, <clears throat> this shows everything that's on the screen. So if we have a whole bunch of stuff that we've built and we're kind of zoomed in, this will show everything at once. This groups items together. That's gonna to be important for us in a little bit when we start talking about making holes. And this ungroups them. So again, important when we start talking about holes. This lines things up together. So that way, if you wanna make sure they're really, really lined up, you can use this button. Sometimes that's tricky to do just by dragging stuff around, so that becomes useful. And then finally, this flips things back and forth. So if you want it to be a different view and, and flip it over, you can use the mirror button. We're gonna leave some of these alone for next time. And then um, also with these, the one we wanna be in is this one right here, 3D design. There are other things like Minecraft and uh, Lego blocks, but we're gonna focus just on the 3D design today. This is our workspace. Um, it allows us to add in other planes for us to look at. And then this is a ruler. So let's see those two things. See, I can add in another plane to look at. And then this is a ruler, because sometimes we need to measure stuff. So we can put a ruler on our screen and measure stuff. So you'll notice that there's two at the top here that have a different kind of shading. These are actually holes. They're not actually a, um, a block that you can place. So when, it kind of looks weird when you put it on the screen and you might think that you're making stuff, but you're really not, they're holes, but we're gonna definitely use them. These are the shapes right here. 
So I'm going to drag something simple. We'll put a box on the screen. And I'm going to put it right at the corner of the ruler, just in case I want to measure. And there it is. And then it gives me some information about it. Um, I can change the steps, which changes how quickly I can change the size of something. I can change its length and width using these arrow keys. But sometimes it's really hard to control. You can also use these little black boxes down here. So when I move my mouse over the red box there, I can drag and change its dimensions. And then I can also drag its dimensions this way. Oh, that moves it up, sorry. Wrong one. I'm trying to get the right black box. You can see it could be tricky sometimes to get the right black box. And I'm gonna get this black box. But then I also have these white boxes, which do pretty much the same thing, but from another dimension. So they're really looking at the corners. The black boxes are really looking at just moving the entire edge, whereas the corners move both the edge of the shape. This one in the center makes it shorter or taller. Now suppose you're designing something really specific. You can type in these boxes and type in the exact numbers that you want. So you can see I have set everything back to 55, so it is exactly a 55 cube. And I'm going to set it so it's sitting right on the ground because it was a little bit up off the ground. So now I want these at zero, and I can see everything. Now I can also move it around and see all of its dimensions. All right, so now the fun part, let's make a hole. Because we, I think pretty much everyone can figure out how to drag blocks on. I know my screen just went blank, there we go. So to make a hole, what you do is you take your other object, like a cylinder here, and we're going to drag it and we want to put it into our shape, but I want to make it so it fills our shape all the way through. I'm going to move it up. There we go. And I'm going to move it backwards. Now you can see it's kind of in the center there, but it's not all the way down to the bottom. Right, a little bit taller. We'll go a little bit deeper. See, I'm using the arrow controls to move things around. This is one moves it um, up and down. This one makes it bigger and smaller. So I'm gonna move it down. So it's a little bit more than halfway through the shape and I'm gonna to try to get it to the center. Now I can also again use these numbers to get it exactly to the center. I can type in those values and figure out exactly where the center is. So now I'm gonna click on both shapes and you can see that they alternate from one highlighted to the other highlighted. In order to get them both highlighted, I have to hold down the shift key. So I'm holding down the shift key now, and you can see now they're both highlighted. There's a blue box around the cube and a blue circle around the cylinder. So that means they're selected. You'll also notice that this tool now shows up. I can now group them. I can now align them. So if I hit align, it aligns them up and make sure everything is even. So when I group it, watch what happens to the shape. All of a sudden, the part that was the hole cuts a hole in my shape. So now I have this cube here with a hole in it. I didn't do real great about putting it in the center. but now I have a cube with a hole. So that's kind of fun. Now we have all these other different shapes that we can pick from. I'm gonna come back to the scribble in a minute. We have a sphere, we have a, a roof shape, a cone, a round roof, pretty much everything you would find in a block set you have here. But then we have some more rounded things. We have a half a sphere. We have what's called a, um, a paraboid. This is a torus and then we have like a tube a heart, some stars, 
and then some other shapes that we can use. So these are what they call the basic shapes. Let's look at the scribble here. The scribble is kind of fun. This is a new feature. When I drag it on, my window changes to flat. But now what I can do is I can draw with my mouse anything I want. This be easier with a touch screen. I'm just doing it with my mouse. So it's not great, but it's just like any drawing program you would have. And we have some other tools that we can get. We can draw shapes. We can add different kinds of blobs in there. We can change the pencil style. Um, actually, no, we can't change the pencil, so I'm sorry. Um, we can use the eraser, though, if something's not right, or if we just want to kind of put a hole in something. I'm going to erase this. Okay, so I'm all done. I'm going to hit done, which is over here. And now what I have created is a three-dimensional scribble. So it could be anything that you can draw. So you want to draw pictures, um, whatever you want to draw. And then you can 3D print those scribbles. And what's fun is we can actually take them and combine them. So suppose I wanted to make this a hole. So I'm going to click on this tool that says make it a hole. I'm going to move it around. And I'm going to flip it up. So I'm going to flip it by using these little control arrows here. And if I can't see the arrow that I want, I can change my view. And you can see I'll get different arrows. So the arrow that I want is I want this one. I want to flip it so it's standing upright. So I'm going to flip it 90 degrees. And if you can't get it exactly by dragging it, you could always change and type this number to 90 degrees. And I'm now going to move this and push it into my block, bring it up a little bit. Ooh, there we go. Too far. Takes a little bit to get used to moving stuff around. Still too far. There we go. And we'll use the arrow little tool up here to move it up. Okay, so now I'm going to group just like I did before. I'm going to click both using the shift key. And I'm going to hit group. Now notice I have an ungroup tool as well because remember we grouped that other hole in there. So if we want to ungroup that and take that out, we can do that. But I'm going to group this. And effectively, what I have done is I have cut into this block. So it's like an engraving now. Let me zoom in out a little bit. So you can see that I have cut inside like I would with an engraver. So when I go to 3D print that out, that will be all cut out for me. That's pretty cool. So that's how you make holes. That's how you use the scribble tool. Then we also have other shapes here. So we have text and numbers. So we can add in letters, but we can also add in text words where we just type it. So I'm gonna try text. I'll put that right here. Let's look at this from the top so we can see what it looks like. And I can type in whatever I want. And I can change its size and shrink it a little bit. Give it a little bit more of a bevel shape. Let's change its color. Now color, color looks cool on here because you can see the colors. But when you 3D print it, your 3D printer is only going to print it in one color. So I like to sometimes put color in just so I can see how things line up. And sometimes we use 3D design for 
other things other than just um, 3D printing. We might want to use it in a graphic software. We might want to take a picture of it and kind of get a cool picture, a two-dimensional picture that we can add to some kind of project. So sometimes we do that. Just moving this so I can see the whole thing. Um, but if you're going to 3D print it, you really just want to change the color to be the same. So I'm going to change the color to be the same. And you can see this hello class is now above the cube and kind of hangs off the ends. And it's also kind of cool. As you can see, it's shadow. So I can think that's kind of fun. So we can have all these le letters that we can use, just like you used to use the magnets, maybe when you were younger. And we have all the numbers. So we can put numbers in as well. We have characters. So here's a little robot we're going to stick in. Oh, he's really, really big. Let's scale him down. I'm going to use my controls and make them smaller, a little stubbier. Let's sit him up here so we can see him. And I think he's facing the wrong direction. So let's push him back and then we will turn him around. If I can find the right turner. There it is. Oh, that's his rocket pack. Okay, so we want to see the whole thing. That's his front. I'll give him a little beanie hat. I like I like the idea of giving him a beanie hat. I think that's kind of fun. Now you notice it's tricky sometimes to get these things lined up where you want them. They always start on the surface down here. So typically you have to move them up and then push them into position. And I always try to cut through first so I can kind of see exactly where I'm at. There we go. Give his beanie hat. Turn it so it lines up right. Okay, he's got a little beanie hat. And you can see over here we have all these different kinds of tools that we can add, like a chicken foot, that's kind of fun. Um, we can add an egg, a bunny ear, um, a bent bunny ear. So those are some of the tools that are there. And we have connectors. So this is kind of fun because when you print these out, you can actually build things with them like a building set. So these are connectors. And they got some sofas and chairs, tables. Now notice some of these like the house plan have color to it. So this would not be a great thing to 3D print because when you 3D print it, it's all going to end up being one color. Whereas here we have at least three different colors. So that's not all that great for 3D printing, but it's great for designing in three dimensions. Then I have some special shapes like springs. So if you end up breaking something, you could actually go ahead and make a replacement for it, like a fan. Uh, this is a snap socket and just do your measurements of the real object and try to fit it in. And here's some other things that they have. Just go through and kind of see what some of the other things. So here's the gears I was talking about. So you could print these gears out and get them to be the right size and fit them into something where the gear may have broken and you can replace it. So they got a whole, whole bunch of these. They have things for circuits. So if we were to print this out, this is like a circuit board, or we could just use it as part of our 3D model. Some more com circuit components. Motors, batteries, maybe he needs a battery. Put a battery on there for our robot. And these are all the different kinds of things that we get, like micro bits. Micro bits are cool to play with. Maybe we'll do that one day. I have one of those. Then we got from the Smithsonian Museum, we have all different kinds of things that we can add. Is that a battery? 
This? Yeah, I added a battery. Let's, oh, here's some fun. Let's give our robot Abraham Lincoln's face. Now, this actually is Abraham Lincoln's face. It's what's called a life mask, where they actually molded it from his face before uh, he died. So this is how they know how Abraham Lincoln looks. So I'm gonna position this and um, actually let me use the other one. This is a good one. There we go. This full head's a good one. What other faces are there? Um, they have I think they only they have Helen Colors and then they have um, Washington B. Anthony. So, but you can always download those and I'll show you one I had done. You can actually even make them of yourself. You need a whole lot of other technology to do that. I did one of my daughter. I'll pull up in a couple minutes. There we go. Get his head into position. Okay, I think it's pretty good. Let's move our beanie up a little bit, maybe. Can, can hold the beanie in his hand. So now our robot has that head on. Now, here's the thing. When I look at this now, this looks pretty good, but when I rotate around, You'll see it may or may not be in the right shape. So you definitely want to look around a little bit to make sure everything is lined up. Okay. Then they have some other things. We got dinosaurs, skeletons. This is great for science class. If you want to put together your own skeleton, you can, or kind of make your own kind of funny skeleton. But these, when you print them out, they connect for real in real life. So you can make some, some toys this way. And then this is just something, a place to save your favorites that you have uploaded. So really interesting, um, I was just listening on the news that someone took Tinkercad or some other 3D design software and they were designing face masks for hospital workers to use and printing them out um, as a quick way of producing those masks for hospital workers. So that's really cool that you can take 3D, 3D printers and build that into something that is really useful really quickly. So once you have your project all built, okay, we can export it and this is how you set it up to 3D print. So when we do it, we're gonna make sure that we do what's called an STL file. That's gonna be the important that we wanna do. But you can also, if you make your own thing, any one of these places um, will have a particular printer. So there's all these different kind of printers. So if you have your printer set up, you could actually send it right to your printer. And we could actually do everything in design. That would be everything. And we would just click on the printer name and send it right over to the printer. Now there's other box in here called send to. This allows you to share it with some other things like Thinkverse, Object Viewer, Colt, My Mini Factory, Robot Magic. And what's cool about some of these places, some of these places will actually print your object, like Thinkverse will actually print your object for real and mail it to you. And you just tell them what you want, what material you want them to print it out of, and they will print it for you and mail it to your house. Of course, it costs money. You do have to pay for that. But that's kind of cool that you, if you don't have a 3D printer and you needed something or you wanted something that you designed, you can have it 3D printed. And funny, I even actually saw that some of these 3D printing companies will print it out of a metal. So it sounds crazy, but yeah, they can make it out of metal, like um, copper, bronze. I even saw that they were able to make it out of gold. So could you imagine making a 3D print of something out of gold? So I thought that was really, really cool. So I promised you I would show you 
the 3D design I did of my daughter. So it's loading. So we were playing one day with a um, connects that you have on an Xbox 360. And it turns out that you can use that connects with some special software to make a 3D scan of yourself. So what I did is I did a 3D scan of my daughter. So that is my daughter in real life. Kind of cool. She looked like. So I can print that out and make a model of her and just kind of have her sitting on my desk. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. That's also how you can put like somebody video game or something like that. And we could add things to her to kind of make her a little, you know, a little bit more real. So she has a little bit oh, yeah. better feature. Like if I needed her to actually have an eyeball, you know, I could actually just take something that's eyeball-ish. Oh, let me look at this from the top. There we go. Put this in her head. Make it a little smaller. And we'll get from the front. Could I, I could actually go ahead now and put an eyeball in her head. Put it in the right spot. Now you can also find some of these designs that you can download online that help you. So like I could probably find a, a real 3D design of an eyeball and put that in her head. But for right now, we're just gonna do this one. Just, you know, whoa, not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna do that undo button, that would be useful. There we go. Sometimes it's hard to get these things positioned. So you have to move it around. See how like it looked like it was on top of her head, but it really wasn't. That's definitely in her head now. Am I gonna get it? It looks like it's on the wrong side, but I think that's okay. Oh, still not in there. This is tricky. Tricky to do. All right, so maybe I'll play with this another time, but it kind of gives you the idea of what, you know, some of the things that you can do, okay? So when you're all done, it actually saves it for you. You don't have to do anything special. And I go back to Tinkercad and it has a collection of all the things that I've done. Now, some of the other things that you can do in Tinkercad, you can build circuits and take a look at how to use Arduino. You could do uh, code and get the computer to code three-dimensional designs. And then there's also lessons where you could go through and kind of take some tutorials to kind of figure out how to do some things in Tinkercad. So all of those lessons are here. Like if you want to create holes or deal with the camera controls and kind of make your own design and um, how to put some things together using some circuitry. So all that information is there and there's plenty of lessons and tutorials to look at. So that is about it for the lesson here. I'm going to stop the recording. So just signing off the recording. Have a great day.